What's going on everybody? Gunner here and today we're going to jump into the Firefly 2.0. Um, biggest difference between this and the, and, the, and the old one is actually a Mark Pettijon Magic Head. Um, everybody, every time I post one of these people are like, how do you tie your thread on, right? They're soft, they're flexible, you can invert them and move them around, get access to your hook, how to tie them off. What they do, uh, they fill with water pressure, they spill over, um, and they basically take your fly and make a crankbait out of it, basically. They make a lipped lure that's going to flutter, hover, have vibration, um, wicked cool in still waters, um, if you're fishing lakes or anything like that, wicked cool fly for fishing still water. Um, but they also fish really well kind of on a light swing. They also fish well getting thumped up current. You can leave them in the current. You can do a give and take retrieve and let them slip down into a, a seam and they just wiggle and kick and wiggle and kick because they always have that water pressure on the cone. So it's a really cool fly um, for a lot of reasons. Um, super fishy and I'll walk you through it. Um, first thing we're going to do is make a dubbing brush, but I'm going to show you two options, um, one with the brush, one without the brush. I think the brush is wicked cool and I could have done, uh, I had room to do three, but the brush is wicked cool because you get to make uh, multiple at one time. I can make up to three of the same color combo, so you just have higher efficiency, uh, it's quicker to tie, um, and you have more durability because these are obviously the same. I got to prep them the same. Um, so that's why I like the dubbing brush, but you don't have to do it. So I'll show you the other option and another cool color combo. Um, so yeah, let's jump over there, make this real quick, um, and then we'll come back. I'm using nine one thousandths of an inch dubbing brush wire. Um, and what I have started right now is Greg Sanyo's laser dub. Um, you can see right about here, this is about two and a half inches of fiber width wise. It's at its full length for the laser dub. Um, and I can fit about three full sections onto my dubbing brush table, which makes this uh, quite a bit more efficient and a little bit more consistent because I can prep all three at the same time. It's not super dense, uh, but basically, you know, you want enough to build bulk, you want enough to separate all the flash and create a nice teardrop shape. So for our flash component, I'm coming in with hairline dubbing, ripple ice fiber. And I actually have gold, copper, and peacock and they're kind of uh, oriented so that I have gold in the back, copper in the middle, peacock in the front and then I'm going to come in and put Hedron's new Perla Glow on top of that. So what you're going to do is you take it off the hank at full length and I cut it in half and you separate that so you have half and half. Now the one half goes on at that half length if that makes sense in the back half of the brush and you take the other half you cut it in half again so you have quarter length of the hank and that's going to be your head. So the half length is going to be your tail, the quarter length is going to be your head. You see what I'm saying? So there's our uh, almost finished brush and you can see I got my half length flashaboo, my quarter length flashaboo, I got ripple eyes from back to front and different color combos uh, over a bed of laser dub and the laser dub is going to give you that teardrop bulk, separate all your flash and contrast with uh, whatever you want to do for eyes and tail. You don't got to worry about getting all of the laser dub picked out because if some of it's trapped, it's actually going to build bulk better. They make a little nicer, baldest little head that's going to fill your fish mask and everything else. So don't worry about picking it out too much. You just want it spun up nice enough. It's durable. It's not pulling out. It's not going anywhere. Nothing's breaking. Everything is good to go. So that is our custom brush. So first thing first, you can actually tie this fly on two different hooks um, and it's basically solely going to depend on how fast your water is. This is an A-Rex size 2 curved Gamorous, super sexy, sticky hook um, and what I love about it is how short the shank is, so you got the hook right at the head of the fly, really awesome for smallmouth bass fishing, but you have a ton of hook gap even with that magic head. Uh, so a really great hook for this. Now when you get into slightly faster water, if you're gonna use it more of, of a plug, um, this is actually, this is a thicker wire, and that's gonna be the major difference. This is a, what is this? It's an owner uh, model 5180-121, uh, and it's a two watt. And what you can see, if, if I hold these up next to each other, they're actually almost identical. 
Um, the 2-aught has a slightly longer shank, the owner has a slightly longer shank, but it's about twice the wire thickness. So this, this hook gap here, this, this keel from the hook, is going to be far more effective because it has twice the wire mass as far as being able to control how that fly rides and stopping it from spinning if you get in too fast of a current. So I'm going to come in with the A-Rex Curved Gamera size 2 in the jaw, it's not going anywhere. So right when we get started here, I'm gonna come in, this is monofilament thread, you can use whatever thread you want, it's not a big deal. Um, and I'm gonna put, <laughs> that was a big flop right there. I'm gonna put a little thread bump right behind my hook eye. And the whole purpose of this thread bump is when I finish this fly off, I'm going to one, push a fish mask over this fly. Two, I'm gonna come in and push a Mark Pettijohn uh, magic head over this fly. And if you leave this hook eye just normal, basically I'm trying to create a little bump right here so that when all this gets pushed over, I have something to kind of force it back into my fly or else you'll crowd your hook eye. Um, and you can still get access to everything, to you know thread it and everything like that. It's not that big of a deal, I just think it helps. So I did that first. I'm coming in, I'm using 150 denier GSB in black. And I'm gonna go right basically to my, in between my, my point and my barb there, and that's where we're gonna tie the tail in. And this tailing material is new, um, I think as of 2018. It's Greg Senyo's laser hair 4.0. Really cool synthetic. Um, and basically the way I would describe it is you have almost the movement of craft fur with the structure and bulk building capabilities of Arctic Fox. So it's like truly a, a really awesome product that's hybridizing uh, what would be kind of a synthetic and a natural and it's wicked fishy, super limp, um, absolutely durable stuff. You will, you know, if you catch a boatload of fish on it and they just eat it, eat it, eat it, uh, it'll kind of knot up. So I recommend fishing with a comb. I love, whenever, anytime you fish with synthetic flies, a lot of it just bring a comb because after they get eaten a dozen times, comb them out. Super easy way to kind of bring your fly back to your starting point here. What I just did is I blended <clears throat> the white, my goodness, I got material everywhere, the white with the chartreuse. Um, I think the chartreuse is beautiful, but it's a little intense. Um, so I just blended it with the white here to tame it down a little bit. And what I'm gonna do, this is that full length, 4.0 I think stands for four inches maybe. Um, and you can see here, I'm gonna have about a three, maybe a two and a half inch tail, a three inch tail. It's got some taper to it, which I'm actually gonna take out a little bit. Pop that right on top, get a nice accurate catch on that walk that backwards with my thread here. Now right here at the back, I'm gonna take this, split it around my hook so you can see I have top and bottom, and then push that down my sides and it'll actually naturally veil and kind of distribute itself top, bottom, side, and then I'm gonna walk my thread forward. So you have a really clean, accurate rear tie-in point for all that laser hair and we did a long and then a kind of short veil back looking to get about 50% back on our tail to build a natural teardrop all on its own. And then I'm going to comb that out so that it looks pretty. <laughs> so that is our tail. Uh, really awesome stuff. Really cool product. Um, I'm going to come in with the dubbing brush we made. Um, so I'm coming in with my dubbing brush. Obviously you got your half length flash boot in the back, your quarter length flash boot in the front to build your correct teardrop. Uh, the core being laser dub is really the biggest addition uh, from the old Firefly to the new Firefly with that uh, laser hair tail. Uh, those are really the two things and what this laser dub does, and you're going to see me walk this forward, um, what this laser dub does, one is going to lay halfway down this tail, right? And we already started building that bulk with kind of the, the double tie, the tie when you know, we tied our excess laser hair, hair back and that's gonna basically build forward as we move forward, building our, our perfect kind of teardrop shaped bait fish. And you wanna do this really nice and dense. You do not wanna get anywhere near this hook eye because uh, we need uh, plenty of room for not only our fish mass but also our magic head on top of that. So you can see the laser uh, laser dub gets trapped down a little bit. 
come in and bodkin that out, no big deal. Biggest thing with dubbing brushes, you want to take your time, you don't want to trap anything down, and when worse comes to worst, you just want to manhandle them. <laughs> uh, otherwise the brush will get the best of you, so don't be afraid to drag that wherever you want and make it do what you need it to do. Knocking everything over. I just made I made a mess on my desk, changing out batteries and taking my tripod down and everything. It's been chaos, working in chaos. So I'm going to get some trapped thread behind and in front of that. Cut a nice short tag here, if I can bend that out. Nice short tag. I'm actually going to loosely comb this out. And this looks like chaos, and that's okay because our, our fish mast is actually going to tame a lot of this down, get our initial silhouette, and then we're going to lightly trim some of that flashaboo uh, to length. Then I'm going to use a soft end of my scissors here to double that wire over. It'll allow me to tie that off nice and clean. And you can see how much bulk that laser dub has. Nice, full, rich. That's your bulbous body, and this whole thing's going to be under pressure, so there's nothing that's that's good. It's all good stuff. Now, I'm going to come in with a 6 millimeter fish mask. Um, it's something that I've been doing, and I've found it to be immensely helpful for uh, adhering eyes and keeping eyes in these masks, is scoring my mask with a bodkin. So I just have my bodkin here, and I take the point, and I just score the crap out of it uh, so that I have a really nice, rough inside surface. And I'm not trying to glue smooth to smooth, but I'm trying to glue smooth to rough, and I can have little spaces for that glue to sink down, seat up, and set inside that mask. So I'm going to shove that mask on. Now typically, if you've watched any of my fish mask videos, I'll come and I'll put a little thread dam right in front of this, but instead I'm going to use my magic head as my thread dam. And what I'm going to do is, you can see how long the little tag is on that, I'm actually going to cut that tag in half so it's a little bit shorter. I'm going to shove that over my hook eye. And this is where that little thread bump that you made beforehand in front of that mask is going to come in handy. And then I'm going to come in with monofilament so that it's clear. You all won't be able to see it. And I'm going to put back pressure starting at the front, moving back towards that fish mask. And that's going to seal everything in place. Wrap that down, clean that up. It's not perfect, the fish won't know, so don't beat yourself up about it. And then give that a whip finish. And then you always want to make sure your mask is centered, symmetrical, top, bottom, you got the perfect orientation on it. And now I'm going to come in to secure those wraps, I'm going to come in with some Deer Creek UV Diamond Fine. It's going to help soak in those edges and get inside that mask. I'll actually tilt my vise up a little bit just so I have a little bit of downforce on here soaking up into that mask. And I'm running a little bit low here and i got to let that sink down to the tip here. You want to concentrate right back at the mask because it'll, it'll distribute forward and you don't really want to get it on the magic head because you want that to be nice and flexible. And that's going to soak inside the mask through the small openings in the side of the uh, inside of the fish mask, soak into that laser dub. It's going to coat over top the edge of the mask and it's going to seal all of that thread. It's going to give you a super durable head system. I'm going to set that just real quick with a pen here. Deer Creek makes a, a laser diode pen that is just my favorite. Um, this thing is super ridiculously powerful and then I'll come in here and clean this up. And something that I do uh, with all of my UV resins, all of my, just any product um, that's UV cured, uh, you know, the lights can do it. The lights do a really good job of setting this up and, and securing it. But what all the time, especially on commercial orders and things, um, I will take my flies and I'll take them outside and let them bake in the sunlight. <laughs> um, there's nothing better than sitting in the sunlight for, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Just, you know, put it on your porch, walk away, put your vice outside, like, just get that mask some sunlight and it'll make 
you know, if you got this to 90%, you know, take it to 100 for you. Something I want to show you guys real quick, since I still have the lights off, how fluorescent that laser hair is, that laser hair 4.0, wicked cool. And then it's uh, contrasting with my black head. And then I have orange Perla Glow from Hedron, the new Perla Glow color. Crazy reflective on top of that. And then Deer Creek just came out with UV. <laughs> <laughs> UV, it's crazy how reflective these are, UV zombie eyes, which is the eyes that we're going to put in these guys. So I'm going to come in. I haven't figured out if I like um, E6000 better than Shugu yet. I'm playing with both. Um, but I'm going to use the E6000 because it's black and it, it plays really cool against this dark head and it'll kind of fill the, the mask and it looks really cool. So I'm going to use E6000. Both are, I've had good results with both. I'm just not sure which one I like better. So uh, this can get a little messy. I recommend just forcing a little bit up through the tube, taking it with your bodkin, dropping it in your eye slot and moving it around. And try to get the little trailers to break off. Man, this stuff is potent. And I have a secret fly tying tool for you guys that you're probably not going to see elsewhere. But I have a box of rags at all times inside my tying desk because I work with UV resins and 5 minute epoxy and soft hex and E6000 and every other imaginable thing on the planet that's going to get all over your bodkins and all over your hands and all over everything. Uh, and it's super useful to have. A, just a dirty cloth in your desk that you can wipe everything clean with. So that's your secret fly tying tool for the day. Push those eyes in there and let that set. And then once that sets, I'm going to come in again with a, a small UV resin, uh, UV diamond fine flex top coat. So that is the Firefly 2.0. The last step you got to do, and I'm going to do it while those eyes are drying here. We'll back this guy out just a wee bit so y'all can see this. What you want to do, some of that uh, flashaboo is a little bit rigid and stiff. Just come in and I take away the outliers so that I have a nice clean silhouette, especially on the bottom. I don't really mind if the back goes a little long. I think that looks pretty good, especially in the water. Clean up that little belly there. You can see just how perfectly teardrop shape that is. Like it's a killer silhouette, absolutely killer. Um, but what you wanna do, and this is really cool about the, the magic heads. Um, basically, if you leave this round, in my opinion, it has a greater opportunity to spin um, and it has a little bit too much authority over that thin wire hook. Um, and what I like to do, I'm gonna pinch this. You wanna line up your hook eyes so you can see it. I'm pinching this with my hook. You can see my fingers touching there. I'm gonna come in from the front and cut a perfectly flat, straight line across the bottom of my cone. And what that does, the spillage becomes quicker. So you just increase the frequency of your wobble, you increase the tightness of your wobble, um, and you have less kind of, you know, you gave it you gave it a place for the water pressure to escape, which helps orient it um, so it's not being distributed randomly, but now it's all escaping out the bottom and it keeps the wobble side to side. So that's what cutting the slit in the bottom does. It's gonna help it ride truer, it's gonna give it a place for the water pressure to escape, um, and the wobble, because it's escaping out the bottom, is gonna be more so side to side than random, which is gonna give it a greater propensity to spin. So that's why you cut a little slit in the bottom there. So while the eyes on that one are setting up, I want to, guys, I want to run you guys uh, through uh, uh, the different technique um, to be able to tie this fly without a dubbing brush. And it's just going to be simple stacking, proportions, all that good stuff. Um, so the tail is going to be the same. So I'm going to put the tail on and jump forward real quick. And I'll catch you guys on the head. So I have my laser hair 4.0 tail in. And what we're going to do is we're just going to run up the body um, with a laser dub. And this is going to actually be pretty cool. I'm going to come in with laser dub in red. I'm going to take a really sparse stack here. Just kind of rip stack it and you want to get your, per, 
you know you want to get it all smooth you want to get it oriented the same direction nice long fiber orientation here and I'm gonna do red right here because this is basically gonna be my gills I'm just gonna take that smash that around my hook with a loose wrap here wrap that backwards fold that back and that's just going to be accent. That's all there just for accent color. Then I'm going to take some ripple lights. This is smolt blue. And I'll have all these color combos in the description for you guys. I'm going to do that. Smash that around the hook. Take a loose wrap. Try to catch all those fibers. Boom. Secure them to the hook. That got a little sloppy, so always double check because those loose wraps don't do it perfectly. Uh, and then clean that back, tie that down. Uh, I'm just going to take a little bit more red. As I move forward with my laser dub, my stacks are going to get denser and denser, trying to build a little bit more bulk at the head. And again, you can take this widen it out a little bit, put it right on top, smash the sides. You want to come up with a nice loose wrap. You see how loose that wrap is? Boom, cinch it down, walk that back, take the head, flare it back, wrap down on top of itself, back to your ripple ice fiber. You can switch colors or not. I'm gonna go back to the ripple or the, the smolt blue here. Smash that on top, pinch it on the sides, loose wrap, bring it back double check real quick you're like I need some more on the bottom you just take your finger fingernails smash it around redistribute it give it more tension one wrap back fold it back catch it all clean as a whistle so something I've been skipping this whole time is my flash boot right because I just did laser dub ripple ice laser dub ripple ice uh, keeping it nice and simple and instead of doing the flash boot throughout the whole fly which would add you know, another step every single time just wait till you get up to the head this is like a, a dyed pearl series olive really gonna be a sweetened back texture and then I'll just run this down the length of the entire back catch that veil it so it's nice and smooth and then what you can actually do you want to leave that long so I still have that pointing forward. Then I'm going to come in with laser dub and silver minnow billy. Of all the stacks, you want this one to kind of basically be the densest. And we're going to hide all that red underneath this silver minnow belly so that it looks like gills here. Again, I'm going to take this, make this nice and wide. You want that nice, fat, and wide and then you just want to smash it down around your hook so it's nice and round loose wrap get it right inside all of that flashaboo make sure it's spread out evenly I got a loop in my flashaboo here fold that back one clean wrap two on top bring your thread down and whip finish You might have been like, dang, that looked a lot simpler. Uh, it's super easy to do. Uh, it's really fast. You get really cool blends doing it. Um, again, I just like the dubbing brush because I can prep you know, three at a time and they're all going to come out the same. This one takes a little bit more practice getting the same result, using the same densities, getting the same silhouettes every single time. <clears throat> so yeah, and you guys know how to do the head. You're going to score your mask, slip it over, cut your cut your magic head a little bit short on that little long side you're gonna cut that long side a little bit short throw that out over use that basically as your thread dam and then tie her down UV resin and eyes and you are golden so that is grab this guy over here too the Firefly 2.0 magic head fish mask fully synthetic flash everywhere crazy reactionary basically crank bait plug fly for, for fly fishing um, really fun streamer 
Um, I got this uh, featured in a video called like Wade Fishing for Bass. Uh, what is, I forget what it's called, but the link's in the description. It's a Wade Fishing video on how to catch more fish. Um, you can see this guy in action, um, and it's just a really fun, wicked cool fly, ultra lightweight, synthetic, um, and totally reactionary, and they dig it. Um, I will leave you with this. You can totally throw this on a six weight, but if you're using like a double taper line, it doesn't really have enough momentum to pull the magic head through the air. So I definitely recommend kind of a streamer oriented bass uh, weight forward line, you know, probably like a smallmouth bass line, another pike line. Uh, any weight forward line is going to have enough momentum to pull that through. Um, but definitely six weight and up. Uh, floating line, you can fish it with split shot, full sinking line, still water, crankbait, plug. So thanks for watching uh, and check it out. I got some wind coming up, but you can see that fly swimming right over that rock. It works best on a constant retrieve because that's what fills that cone with pressure, right? If you cast it out and give it a nice slow retrieve, you're gonna have this beautiful little waking wobble to it. A nice, awesome S movement, tail kicks. You can also rip it and stop it. That cone's gonna stop on a dime. You're gonna get big tail kicks out of that uh, laser hair material. And the whole fly just comes to life here. I'll get you a slow-mo of this wobble.